everybody wants to know what is it like to cruise in 2021 well i'm the guy for you because i just did it what is it like to cruise in 2021 well i'm going to tell you and there's there's 10 big differences Let, let's talk about it Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here to really break it down, uh, to give you the inside scoop on what it's like to cruise in 2021. And, and the reason I know this information is I just did it. A uh, little over 24 hours ago, I was sitting in the Windjammer Buffet on Adventure of the Seas, having lox and bagels. And now I'm back home to, to break it all down. And it's just that quick. All right, it's a list of 10 with a bonus number 11. Before we jump into it, let me say this is just the beginning of my coverage of my cruise on Adventure of the Seas. So if you want to stay caught up with everything that I did and all of the inside scoop, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. I'm going to do it in chronological order. The first thing that was very different on this cruise from any other cruise that I've been on is I checked in at a hotel the British Colonial Hilton. There was no cruise terminal for the check-in process. I went from the hotel that I stayed at, the Warwick Resort, and I took a cab over to the British Colonial Hotel, and my whole cruise check-in process occurred at that hotel. After I checked in at the hotel and went through all of the process of the check-in, then I got on a bus, on a shuttle bus, and they dropped me off right in front of the cruise ship. So, that was a huge difference, checking in at the hotel and really arriving to the cruise ship by shuttle bus. That was a big difference. That's probably Bahamas specific. Big difference number two was the pre-cruise COVID test. Before I could even leave the British Colonial Hilton, I had to go through the swab process. Now, what I didn't know is there's a couple kind of swab processes. There's a deep cavity swab, and then there's like a lower nose swab. And uh, this was uh, somewhere in between. It was very painless. It wasn't like they shoved something all the way up into my brain. But yes, uh, this was something that was completely different than any cruise I'd ever been on before. I had to get a COVID test before I could even get on the cruise ship. Big difference number three is that my checked bag, my checked suitcase, got sanitized somewhere along the way. Now, I think it's a difference. I don't know that they're always sanitizing the luggage. Maybe that's part of the process. But uh, this time when they sanitized my luggage, they put a sticker on the top of it saying that my luggage had been sanitized. Now, I didn't know that I was going to include it in a list. And so unfortunately, I peeled the sticker off my luggage. I wish I could have showed it to you. But trust me, it was a white sticker. It had some red lettering on it. it says your luggage has been sanitized. Number four, a big difference on this cruise opposed to any other cruise that I've been on before is there was limited capacity. I knew there would be limited capacity, but I wasn't sure how much. Well, there's still some estimate. I don't know if there's an official uh, like reporting how many people are on board, but uh, the, the, the consensus is it was somewhere around 1,000, and this ship holds 3,000. So it's about a 30% capacity, and it was definitely noticeable on the cruise ship. It was super not crowded on the cruise ship, and so uh, I, for one, enjoyed it. But yes, uh, the big difference with this cruise from any other cruise I've been on, uh, limited capacity. Number five, and this was a big difference I didn't really expect at all. There was no gangway. Uh, we've talked in the past about the build-up to the cruise, that, that moment that you snake your way up the gangway and finally cross the threshold into the cruise ship was going to be momentous. Well, here in Nassau, there was no gangway. There was just, it was like we'd stopped in Nassau for a port day and you just went up that little ramp and you went right in the cruise ship. It was no less emotional, like going there and getting the card scanned for the first time and interacting with security. You know, it wasn't the same as walking into a grand atrium or anything like that, but there were crew members there. Everybody was excited that we were back cruising, but it made it hard to film because you can't film security. So, crossed the threshold, turned off the camera, and got all of the security love and the crew there as we scanned our bags to get on the cruise. But yeah, it's pretty different. No no traditional gangway. Number six on my list is the E-Muster. Now, this was something I was completely looking forward to, uh, a muster drill like no other. It was very interesting how it worked. You pulled up the muster app on your phone, the safety app. You had to watch a series of videos and get the little tick mark that you had completed those videos, and then you presented yourself at the muster station with your completed checklist for the final check they scanned your card and that was it lickety split 
Now the challenge for me is my I, I, it didn't work. I watched the little video and then when I went to you know certify that I watched the video, I would get an error. And so my muster experience was different than some people whose the app did work. For me though, I had to go to the muster station and get a mini muster drill. Like somebody showed me how to put on the life jacket. But the whole thing took like less than five minutes and there were no other people there. You had several hours to complete the muster process. And so this was like self-service muster, if you want to put it like that. Uh, you just walked up to the muster station. You went through about a five minute drill. Uh, you weren't with a crowd of people. There was uh, physical distancing. We'll talk more about that at the muster station. So no more, you know, 200 people piled onto a deck in the hot sun waiting for others to arrive. It was just a real simple, sweet muster process. Probably would have been even more sweeter if the uh, if the app would have worked. I know it worked for some people, but it did not work for me. Uh, but yeah, a pretty cool e-muster process. Number seven, physical distancing. This was probably the most noticeable thing on the cruise ship. There was a lot of opportunities on the interior for physical distancing. The theater, for example, they would only let you sit two by two, and then the next two seats would have a reserve sign on it. Uh, the lines, all the queuing lines had uh, markers on the floor for physical distancing. In the casino, every other slot machine would be open. Get the craps table, for example. You can normally get like 16 people at a craps table, eight people on each side of the craps table. Uh, on this cruise, you can only get six people total at a craps table. So three on each side with physical distancing. Even like the Promenade Cafe, they have tables there and some tables you could sit at, some tables you could not sit at, the piano bar the same way. So every place that you went, there was uh, signs that were working to make sure that physical distancing was made maintained and I feel like the process worked really well. So there was still the ability to congregate with your friends and have a good time but it never turned out to be huge crowds of people and I think for the most part it worked really well. Number eight on my list was the pervasiveness for the need of a reservation. I've been on other cruises where you had to reserve your show because the show was popular. Of course you got to make reservations for specialty dining but this one was interesting. You even had to make a reservation to go to the buffet and I think this ties into the physical distance they wanted to limit the amount of people that could be in the Windjammer, be in the buffet, and every show you needed a reservation because they were limiting the capacity in the show. It was all pretty seamless. You did it on your app. You made a reservation. You went at your time. And look, I did both. There were times where I reserved the time at the buffet, and then there were also times where I just walked up. And because of the limited capacity, I never really waited to get in there. So reservation, not a big deal. There were a couple shows that last minute I, I looked on the calendar and I said, oh, I'd like to go see the ice skating show again and uh you know because i hadn't reserved it was already booked up that that component was interesting it did make you have to plan a little more what you were going to do for the day to make sure you got into the things that you wanted to get into but uh reservations used more on this cruise than any other cruise i'd been on previously so that, that was a big difference number nine deals with the buffet this was interesting there was no buffet at dinner time so you could get in the wind jammer for breakfast, you could get in the wind jammer for lunch, but they were closed for dinner. So you had to go to the MDR, you had to go to the specialty restaurant, or you had to rely on the uh, promenade cafe or the cafe promenade that they had pizza and sandwiches or room service. Those were your options for food at dinner. Uh, no dinner time buffet. I don't know if this was because of uh, staff limitation. I'm not really sure. I never really got a clear answer why there was no dinner buffet. And, and looking at my list, I realized that I did not include the buffet changes as a big difference. The buffet was no longer self-service. I did do a video talking about what the buffet is like now. Uh, check out that link above and go check that out. All right, so we're rolling into number 10. Let me remind you, there's still a couple things going on in this video. I've got bonus number 11. It was the thing I liked the least, the biggest difference I liked the least. And then I'm going to tell you whether or not all these differences made the crews bad. Was it good? Did I like it? So stay tuned for that. Number 10 on the list is I had to take a COVID test to get back in the United States. That's a regulation from the U.S. government. Uh, the cruise line's very accommodating on that. They give you the test for free on the cruise ship. And of course, I'm sitting here so you know the result of the test. Again, that was not a very deep nasal swab. It was actually just on the inside cavity of the lower nose, which was kind of cool. Uh, very easy, very uh, quick. And uh, they scheduled that process well. They got your results easy peasy lemon squeezy as they say and number 11 the big difference that i liked the least was that the crew members had to wear face coverings 
Crew members are vaccinated, yet they left the protocol in place for face coverings. It was a little bit of a challenge. I'm used to listening to people talking in face coverings, so I didn't have any trouble with that. But, of course, you like to see their faces. The cool thing that Royal did is they had a little button that would actually show your face, and it said, uh, this is what I look like. This is the smile under the mask. That was a cool aspect of it, uh, this little button. And uh, that way you could kind of see what the person looked like under the mask. I like this difference at least because I would have liked to seen all of the crew who were super excited to be back. So it leaves us with the big question, was this cruise good? Yes. I had a fabulous time on this cruise. I was able to cruise without a face covering myself. I was able to do all the things that I like. I was able to see shows and go to the casino and hang out with my friends and interact with people. I was able to leave the cruise ship and go explore Cozumel on my own. It, it was very close to cruising the way it was. Other than these differences, which you would obviously notice, it was awesome. The biggest stress point for me, obviously, were waiting for the test results. These were the only unknowns that could you know, drastically alter my cruise vacation. The risk of uh, whatever would happen with those tests was well worth the reward of this cruise. Cruising in 2021 is back, baby. It is awesome. I am so excited that I had this opportunity of the past week. I cannot wait to go again. The question I'm gonna throw to you, which one of these differences would you feel the least comfortable with? Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the show show today please show your support by hitting the like button or i'm gonna remove the head from your elephant towel animal and trust me that's something i would do this is tony for la lita loca and until the next time we'll see you on the lido for reels bye